afternoon and welcome. It's been almost a year working on this project, so I'm very, very happy to, to share it with you today. This project examined examples of poorer performing buildings that achieved significant improvements through retrofitting and upgrading. And surprisingly, it was found that not only was this achievable, but that it also had a positive business case with additional related benefits while improving environmental performance. So funded by the Environmental Trust, I think there was a large amount of vision that they took on this project. And it asks, how can we capture the experiences from the successful upgrades of low performance buildings and share them with others? Low performance buildings in this study were defined as buildings that were zero to two neighbour stars, base building energy. They were mostly older with lower PCA grading and they had to be in Sydney for logistical reasons. The leaders, they were defined as buildings that upgraded from this low performance base to four or more stars. So these are the sorts of buildings we're looking at. They're older buildings, often built more than 20 or 30 or even 40 years ago. They were built at a time when environmental performance was not largely considered and many have done little since to improve this. So how many buildings are there in this category? Well, the average age of all buildings in Australia's CBD centres are 28 years since they were built and 19 years since refurbishment. So we've got a large amount of older buildings um, in the study and a lot of these buildings in the study would, would be uh, on the older side of that average. So in terms of building grade, C and D grade represents over half of the building stock in the CBDs of Australia. B grade represents another third, and it's estimated that if these buildings, the B, C and D grade buildings, were rated, they would achieve a two star or less rating. So I was going to show you some examples of buildings in this category. I'm not singling out any buildings, and I apologise if this is one of your buildings. This is a building in North Sydney, another one in Milsons Point, all zero star buildings, another one in the city, Macquarie Street. They're not all small buildings, they're going to be large buildings. And they're not all old buildings, they can equally be new buildings which were built to a lower performance standard. And moving up, we have uh, buildings that are one and a half stars. So this is a building which has been renovated, and has a, uh, a premium uh, type uh, appeal, but at the same time, it's only 1.5 neighbour stars. So increasingly, buildings in this category uh, are being upgraded. This study found that there weren't, weren't many and they were hard to find, but there are increasingly more buildings and there are good reasons to do so. And that's what we're going to discuss today. A lot of buildings need to have improvements made to them. They're getting older and they need uh, some investment in them to keep them running or to maintain them as a viable asset. Other buildings want a market advantage. They want to attract larger or corporate uh, or government tenants who demand good environmental standards. So through this project, we did find examples that not only uh, showed that large improvements were possible, but that investment in environmental upgrades can also provide good economic benefit, which hopefully by the end of today's event, uh, people will uh, consider further. So this project uh, is broken into two sessions this afternoon. We're going to have a, a first session with three highly acclaimed technical speakers, and they're going to share their experiences and discuss three uh, aspects of this project. The first is, why should you consider upgrading your building? Looking at some of the issues, especially around the business case. What can you do to improve the performance of your building? And also, how do you get a successful upgrade outcome? In the second session, we're going to have presentations of three case studies from the six that were studied in the report that have upgraded uh, and with great success. And they definitely are leaders in this project and they're going to present their experiences and share their lessons. So I was very fortunate in this project to meet a lot of uh, Australia's experts. I had about 12 people that I interviewed in that expert group and uh, I felt very, very honoured to, to meet them. And today we have three of them to speak with us.